Here we go. This should be a good one. Watched Obsidian Gaming last week, and they took a very convincing win. I believe it was Towers of Doom. Don't quote me on that. I don't really quite remember. Oh boy, I'm old. Can't remember last week. Uh, and this week is Lime Speed's pick. It is going to be Warhead Junction, I thought. It's supposed to be Warhead Junction, so kind of ignore that uh, display. I think Top Drafter probably doesn't have uh, Warhead Junction yet, so that's why you see Braxis hold out. Now we see Lost Vikings banned. Lost Vikings just seem kind of broken on the map, so no surprise there. There, there are so many bodies. You, they're just sp spreading you out. If you're not at any of the warheads, uh, a Vikings will just show up and pick it up, and you just can't. And they provide so much lane pressure that it's such a huge map that they can provide so much lane pressure, and it's kind of hard for you to distribute all your resources correctly in every map. Now, let me switch to the draft screen, that would be nice. Um, <clears throat> Zagara is another one of those map pressure uh, heroes, so another one that's banned right there. So, not surprising there, Warhead Junction is one of the largest maps, and once again, that's why I'm kind of excited about it. It's a big map with very many points of interest, so how teams shot call and how they distribute their resources, how they plan their strategy, how they work around their lineup to win the game is going to be different and very interesting compared to some other maps like Battlefield of Eternity, for example, where there's kind of like a central point to the map. Uh, a lot of the other maps are just kind of group up and fight, whereas this one, you really have to be smart about where you want to go and where you want to put every one of your pieces. So. Let's talk about the draft. I'm kind of behind here. They're drafting really fast, actually. So Falstead and Brightwing, again, the mobility heroes, dominate large maps. ETC, will we see stage dive? We've seen it uh, more and more often in competitive because everyone knows how to play against Mosh, everyone knows how to draft against Mosh, people will save their... Um, people will save their interrupts for it, will stay out of range, not group up. There aren't that many choke points on this map either, so, you know, Mosh Pit will get uh, limited effectiveness maybe, so stage dive is definitely a consideration. Uh, <laughs> Thrall, another solid solo laner, so you can kind of leave him to win a lane, and then when the Warhead comes up, he can fight for it by himself. Um, of course, Thralls need to play very safe, they, they need to be aware of where the enemy is on the map, so if there was a pick like Zeratul or Nova, it can make his job very hard, because suddenly he's expecting a one-on-one, -on -one. he's expecting to dominate a one-on-one -on -one matchup, but if another hero suddenly shows up, then he's going to be in a quite, quite a bit of trouble. And then we see Malfurion actually make it for the to the third pick for the first time this week. Uh, he's of course been the powerhouse healer and you know just completely overpowered by a lot of uh, people's estimation. So seeing him go this late is just a gift for Obsidian Gaming. They're probably laughing and cheering that <laughs> they're getting Malpur. And of course he is a very heavy lane sustain hero as well. Um, even without, even before his innervate buff, people would pick him on on maps like Tomb of the Spider Queen, where being sustaining, not having to go back to base, is very key to winning the map. So he should do very. <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, guys. Um, he should do very well on a map like Warhead Junction. So the the yeah, second round of bans is Illidan and Lily. Um, not really quite sure about the Lily ban. I, I don't know if she's particularly good on this map or if it's they're trying to ban out a comfort pick from Obsidian. Illidan is a lane sustainer. He can take mercs by himself. So you can see that with Sonya, uh, Lion Speed already has the merc camp taking advantage, I guess you could say. Um, she can do camps by herself at very high health and still sustain herself in lane. Like she could push a lane go and do mercs, come back and soak the soak the lane uh, in time. So 
they're probably looking to control the map a bit that way. So they possibly have two globals and a merc control hero. Vala is just a very solid, standard, safe DPS pick and very consistent. However, if she eats a few shots uh, of anything, if she tries to trade harass, like let's say with Thrall, although I bet Sonya is going to go into the Thrall lane, that matchup is very favorable for Sonya. Well, I would say very favorable, but Sonya should win. Um, but if she has to trade with Thrall, she doesn't have any sustain of her own, so she will lose that lane. Uh, I suspect she will not be by herself. And then we see Tychus and Murden. Now Tychus against Double Warrior is obviously very good. The question will remain whether he will pick Odin or he will pick uh, Laser. Laser is very good around um, kind of solo points of interest maps or kind of where you have to fight around one point. So kind of like to alter Towers of Doom, you have to fight around the altars. So you can't really disengage from the laser without giving up the objective. So that's where laser would be good. But Odin did get a buff and is pretty strong right now. So we might see, we might see Odin. And then Meriden is kind of like the Vala of tanks. Very solid, very consistent, always will give you uh, what you're looking for. Just kind of from game to game is always going to be tanky, always going to give you the escape, always give you the control. So, And then the final pick we have Li Ming. Of course she is kind of the Vala of mages. She's very consistent. She has escape, she has... Uh... Sorry, we're just starting the game here. She has um, a lot of damage, a lot of burst potential. She can poke around the objectives, so... I wonder if she'll even take Aether Walker on such a big map. I guess with the mount changes it could happen, but I doubt it. Uh, she'll probably be looking for some kind of a sustain. And um, yeah, so very solid lineups from both teams. I, I do, if he goes for the double global with the stage dive, I kind of do like it. One of the ways you can, of course, one of the weaknesses of Malfurion is that he has no burst heal. So if you do take stage dive and you can get into the back line, Malfurion will have a lot of trouble uh, keeping his team up, especially if you just stun him before he can stun him and blow him up before he can get that tranquility off, if he gets a tranquility off. So looking at these lineups, I don't know this map quite that well. I've only played on it a couple of times, although I think I won both times. Um, I would have to say that I favor the more mobile lineup, the more global lineup. So I kind of, I really like Lion Speed's draft here. Uh, like I said, they have the pressure with the mercs and they have two globals. Okay, so looks like Lion Speed got booted from the game again. So just gonna have to re-invite them. Yeah, it is, it is Warhead Junction. Uh, top Drafter, I think, doesn't have Braxis yet. I mean, doesn't have Warhead Junction in their draft yet, so it just showed Braxis. So I'm gonna, so what do you guys think? What do you, I don't know which team you guys favor on this map. Uh, I'm just gonna go with Lion Speed for no good reason. Although I should probably just go with the Malfurion lineup. And I know I've seen Obsidian play and they're pretty good, so... Alright, here we go. So good luck to both teams. Once again, this is Chair League Season 3 Division 2. We see... and these are two two and two teams in Division 2, Obsidian and Lion Speed.
Yeah, it, it's true that Obsidian can can melt a target. Tychus isn't the best at getting in there, though. I guess with some gust setups, they could definitely isolate a target and blow them up. Um, and Thrall always has the flank sundering setup. But it, it remains a question of how many big team fights you're even going to get, I think, because a lot of this map is about controlling the nukes, just using the nukes. Like Asmodan, I think, is amazing on this map for that reason. He just puts so much pressure on the lane, and then he and then he uses the nukes, uses his pushing power. Anyway, introducing Obsidian. We have Daltef on Mirrodin, Yukru on Malfurion, Confliction on Thrall, Grape Juice on Tychus, and using a taunt, <laughs> and uh, Tim, the captain, on Falstad. Over on Lion Speed, we have Zai Fi on Brightwing, Varchisi on Sonya, Touch of Chaos on Li Ming, S Fox on uh, the Big Cow, and Glaucus on Vala. Looks like Vala is going to go off on her own. So at least I was wrong about how they were going to lane it. So no, no, there we go. ETC is going to go help her. So vision advantage going to Obsidian early. Of course, they grouped up as five, so not showing their lanes quite yet. And it looks like Thrall is going to go solo bottom. All right. Oh, no. Yeah, OK. Mirrodin's going back mid. OK, I do like the way they lane this. Um, Tychus does need a, a healer with him so that he can more efficiently trade and not worry about trading. Um, looks like Thrall may not have seen the ETC here, and this is what I was talking about with Thrall, right? If there's a second person in lane, suddenly he's in a lot of trouble. And there he goes, is he going to be first blood? Vala doesn't look like he, he can chase him down, but he's already had to tap, so now he has to play extra safe. Well, looking at the level 1 talents, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, everything very standard, and it looks like Li Ming went for Astral Presence. And Guitar Hero at level 1 for ETC. Once again, sustaining and staying in the lanes is very key. And looks like Malfurion has come to help the Mal. I mean, Malf has come to help the Thrall. So evening up this map, uh, evening up this lane, and I think the Malfurion Thrall lane should actually have the advantage. They actually have way more sustain than Bala, which has none. Look, she, she's gonna have to tap right now, and this is not gonna be improved for them. So, so the first, I believe, the first warhead phase is always two. It's always these two. So that's coming up right now, and unfurling spray for Brightling. So once again, nothing out of the ordinary. Li Ming catching Tychus in the fog there. Looks like Falstad flew right down, and they have a three on two down here. Brightwing's still choosing where to go. He's choosing to, she's choosing to uh, secure the bottom one, and there shouldn't be too much Obsidian can do about this bottom one. I mean, Thrall is great at stalling for now, but he's getting pretty deep. If Vala was just pressuring him the whole time there instead of trying to capture it, uh, they could have done even better. But it looks like Obsidian is quicker on the rotation, and they've already got four down here. And look at all the damage ETC and Vala are taking, especially Vala. Now Brightwing's here to heal her up finally, so she can go a little bit more aggressive, but it looks like Malfurion already got the Warhead, so it's two Warheads to zero after the first phase. Wow. Good job by them. So look at how quick they were with the rotation compared to Lion Speed. Like they, they are, it seemed like they already had a plan on what to do. Despite this being Lion Maps, Lion Speed's map pick, uh, Obsidian knew how they wanted to go about the the first Warhead phase. And they used the first Warhead to just take the wall. Now there has been, you know, different discussions on when or how the best use of the nuke is. I like to use put the center. Oh wait, here we go. Brightwing is very low, but oh, nice stun. Three man stun from ETC to save her life, or else she couldn't go back. She was zoned out by the nuke, and it looks like Malfurion's actually gonna go down. Vala does so much damage if you just let her sit there and continue to destroy you. So Malfurion, OP here or not, still die, still you know has the durability of paper. So gotta be more careful. 
Now, Sonya's left on one on one with Falstad. Sonya, despite winning most one on one melee matchups, uh, has kind of a rough time against some ranged heroes, so. Uh, looks like Falstad's leaving her alone, though. Now, taking a look at level 4 talents, we have Loudspeakers, good talent, Dominance, very standard, Unstable Anomaly, which actually cancels, uh, is necessary to cancel channels, so. Um, standard focus attack follow through for Sonya and the multi shot build from Vala. So it looks like they're chasing Tychus a bit here, just scaring him off, you know, get out of our neighborhood, we don't like your cutting around here type deal. No one harm done. And at level 7, Echo Petal. And there's these two are saving their, their talents, which is quite smart actually. Holding your talents is something that people in other MOBAs have done for years, and I'm glad to see a lot more people are doing it in Heroes of the Storm. Of course, especially it's even more important in Heroes of the Storm since hiding on the map isn't going to hide your, your skill or talent choice. So. so it looks like pretty static leaning. So more talent discussions maybe secret weapon actually from falstad he even despite taking gathering storm he didn't take the hammering so or the boomerang rather um of course boomerang did get nerfed in one of the latest patches so maybe just seeing that he's he maybe he's thinking that uh he needs to just stay safe Getting that extra range does provide you a lot of safety. Look at how aggressive Falstad is. He barreled in against two warriors here and Li Ming. Very smart, but he just got out, barely taking any damage. That's a nice stun from ETC to block the... And the hammering actually didn't go far enough, despite the secret weapon. So these displays don't work, sadly. So I'm going to have to count the nukes. Looks like... Oh, looks like one... What? Falstad died? Oh, he probably must have died top. There was a surprise five man, and uh, sorry, a nuke was used mid. That's why my attention was there. But look at this! Thrall has actually take has two camps pushing with him, and someone has to address this. The wall's gonna go down. They're gonna lose top four. This is not a good trade for Lion Speed. And there we go. People are going back now to try and address this because they're they're taking a lot of damage on this wall. One nuke is probably gonna, well, it's definitely gonna finish the gate and maybe a couple of towers. And in the meantime, since they're distracted with that, the fort is going down mid for line speed. They just got outmaneuvered there. Even despite the fact that they got, they were the ones with the kill on Falstad, uh, they're about a level behind and they just lost a fort and took a lot of damage on the bottom keep wall. So, but they still have... oh no, they used their nukes, okay. So, yeah. Let's look at the heroics. Mighty Gust, holding. Laser, he did go the laser drill. Oh right, yeah, we saw it mid, uh, taking down the the fort. Uh, the laser drill, of course, is better against single target... Uh, take single targets. So... Just leaving it by a, a structure that can't move and has to take all that laser damage is uh, ideal. And then we actually have Playmaker coming up from Muradin. Oh, I wonder what his plan is for this one. Who is he going to Playmaker? Maybe Li Ming? Maybe Brightwing? Maybe even Sonya. Maybe Sonya is going to go too deep and then he's going he's gonna to do it. And there we go, there is the stage dive for ETC. I love that choice. I mean, I've talked about it to death now, so I won't say any more. But on a map, on a, such a huge map like this, he stage dive will help a lot. Like, he could stage dive right now, bottom, and probably kill Thrall along with, uh, along with Vala, so. And Wrath of the Berserker for Sonya. So we do see that Tranquility is taken for Malfurion, even though he didn't need to use it yet. He finally decided, maybe got the call from his captain, that that's what they wanted to go with. And now two more warheads are spawning on the map. You can see how big this map is. It's crazy. And small skirmish, it looks like Brightwing and Thrall are going at it mid. Of course there isn't much for Thrall to do on this lane anymore, he's just trying to zone him back so that he can get the warhead. 
Now, is Brightwing going to te teleport up? No, there's a stage dive from ETC, but Brightwing's nowhere in position to fight this. And seeing this, they should get the top one right away. And Vala is in a lot of trouble. The playmaker on Vala, and she is dead for sure. And ETC's actually kind of holding his own against all there, but no, he, he gets completely pressured and killed. And but Sonya is coming down, and Thrall can't man fight Sonya one on one, so. He just has to step back and give up this warhead for now. Of course, he should. Sonya should not be channeling this. He, she should be hiding and trying to get some more damage if Thrall comes down. He should be hiding in this corner, in fact. Just standing in this vision means Thrall can just freely poke her. So, and it looks like Obsidian is quicker on the rotation once again. You gotta wonder why. Uh, why Lion Speed's taking so long to get to these tributes after you know finishing at another. Objective. I mean, they knew they couldn't fight the four on three top, so they should have just all rotated to make sure they got the middle one. Now, it looks like there's a camp invasion here. Always good to do if you can do it without risk, and being a talent tier up, they felt like line speed won't engage them, and they were right. And blue team has launched a nuke. So what I was saying about the nuke is that... Uh, it does more damage in the center, so you kind of always want to get it on the forts or keeps. But we saw that Obsidian Gaming was kind of using it on the wall first, which I think might be might be a good solution as well, because it guarantees you the XP right away for the for those first warheads, and it gives them that advantage. Now the game isn't over. They lost uh, a keep on a big map, which is really tough. But they are still close enough in levels that they can catch up with one big fight. And on this map, if you if like four nukes spawn, up to four nukes can spawn. So if they get all four nukes, for example, and wipe the enemy team off the map, then they they should be right back into it. So we see that's the stuff for Tychus, which I'm seeing more and more common now. Quarterback at level seven. Um, giant killer for Falstad, once again double warrior, so no surprise there. And it looks like they're just walking right into the boss. And it looks like Line Speed is doing their own boss. Oh, very good. I was afraid that they wouldn't do something like this, and then they give up two bosses instead. Of course, with the pr with such a big map, once you have pressure going uh, from one boss, you can just take the other boss. Thrall kind of wastes his sundering. It's not like he can challenge five people here. I wonder why he did that. Uh, just stalling them a bit didn't really help, and Malfurion actually uses Tranquility up top here. That's 90 second cooldown that he just blew on a boss. I'm just very curious that they didn't just rotate out uh, aggro and uh, just make sure Malfurion's heals did its work. Now, of course, Malfurion went Shrink Ray instead of Life Seed and Strangle Vines and Eventual Roots. He just went for a pure non healing build, even. So. Uh, they are kind of cool. He is kind of lacking in the heal department, but still, I don't know. Now they're pressuring top keep, which is very smart because I mean, obviously it's the boss lane, so you want to you want the top. But also, it's the opposite side of the lane that they've already uh, taken the keep on. So with that split pressure, it takes much longer for the enemy team to address both and push both lanes out, or at least to do it safely. So. If they make a play like they want to make a pick on anyone trying to push out top or bottom lane, then it's really easy. And look at all these nukes they're gathering. <laughs> Getting four nukes looks like Thrall will get caught though. They finally, I, they finally found a point of weakness, but here comes the rest of the team. The uh, the laser goes down. They focus it right away. Very nice. If you can if you can kill it right away, it's really worth it because that laser does a lot of damage. And here comes oh they're just launching a nuke on the position. Sonya has to get out of there, but there are actually two nukes on top of each other. The Venn diagram of death and Tychus taking a lot of damage, but Tranquility should heal them all up. They're in a very tightly packed group. They're very should be very careful. And Vala was the one in front. Oh no, some slight mispositioning there from Lion Speed actually will lose them this fourth nuke. All four nukes will go to Obsidian, and look how they didn't hesitate to use the nukes in the fight. I really like that decision making from Obsidian Gaming. They're just, they know that the nukes are there. If they win the fight, um, they can end the game. So, might as well do that anyway. If not, 
you know, the nukes weren't that weren't that useful to them. I mean, it, it is useful, obviously, but it's not game breaking for them to not have them. So really well played there, using them to win the fight, to really just zone the fight out completely. Uh, and it looks like this is a curious nuke. Uh, I don't know if it's a little bit of BM going on or a misclick or whatever that was, but uh, just a complete waste of a nuke there. Of course, we have entered the territory where nukes do more damage, If uh, for those of you who don't know. At 14 minutes, nukes actually do more damage. So it is worth saving. Uh, if it's near 14 minutes and you want to want to use a nuke, you probably should save it for 14 minutes. And so we we see they are up one talent here once again, up three levels, and Obsidian totally has control of this game. Uh, Vala needs to be super careful. She has been the one that's been kind of picked off in these fights, and then once she's down, uh, the rest of the team can't fight. We see Titan Grenade on level 16, no surprise there. And T Tenacious Roots just going for a full root build on Malfurion. Heavy Impact, pretty standard, and Tempest Fury for Thrall. Just going so much burst damage for him. Of course he also took Giant Killer, so those double warriors is gonna feel some hurt <laughs> from that Thrall for sure, and from the Falstad. And of course from Tychus who has a natural Giant Killer type talent. So. On the other side, we see aggressive shredding. Okay, interesting. Uh, I don't know how many autos he's really gonna get, but he picked it, and the, the playmaker coming out, but of course it's ETC, so he just slides right back out. He also still has stage dive to save himself, and he uses it at the last second, but that's not gonna save him. And it looks like Mirrodin got very low, but he's a Mirrodin, and taking this Fight with oh no, Tranquility's gonna heal them all back up, and Brightwing gets brought down. All, all the damage they've done is pretty much for naught. As Malfurion's gonna heal them all up, they can actually probably just end the game here with one or two more picks. I'm surprised they didn't go more aggressive on that. I guess with all their heroics down, they're just not comfortable doing that. And it looks like a full teleport build for Li Ming now. When you're behind. I think Diamond Skin is always the wrong choice because when you're behind, like three levels behind especially, when you're this far behind, you need to snowball a fight completely in your favor. I'm talking you need to go 5-0 or 5-1 to have a chance of coming back into this game. And that means not taking Diamond Skin, taking damage so that you can get those resets early in the fight. Because in a sustained fight, you can assume that their whole team is going to show up, they're going to turn the fight, so with just with their advantage. So here comes another nuke that was cancelled, it looks like. And actually, they took a lot of damage, but then they're going to have to back off for a second, but with Mirrodin's third win, that's going to be no problem. Malfurion's heals, of course, uh, one of the best heals per mana uh, on a single target, so very efficient. And we see Bouncy does take in and Pixie and Shield does take in for uh, Brightwing. And then the standard Nurse of Steel and Frost Shot. So it looks like a cleanse came out on the ETC there. That's a strange use since Obsidian is backing out already. And it looks like they're just getting ready to bait this boss. Oh, I like this. I like the sneaky plays, even though they don't need it. They're level 20 against 17. Uh, there is almost no chance that Lion's Feet is willing to come up and challenge. They might go and take their own boss, which they should definitely do, but there's no way they come and challenge this boss. If they have any hope at all, any hope at all, Lion's Feet needs to make a crazy play. Uh, I want to see them set up a party bush maybe around this camp right now, right after, if they can finish the boss fast enough, or just anywhere on the map, try to catch one or two people out, and then take the fight from there. They are entering the suicidal loss territory, you know. They know they're gonna lose. They know that if both teams play a normal game of Heroes of the Storm right now, if both teams understand Heroes of the Storm right now, then both teams know that Lion Speed has lost. So they gotta make the game chaotic, they gotta make the game crazy, they gotta make it surprising, and so that Obsidian doesn't understand the game anymore. And then they have a chance. Oh, nice Gus, but it actually 
uh, is an anti-combo with the Sundering, but it doesn't even matter. Their advantage is so great right now that they can make a couple of mistakes and it won't matter. And there we go, the GG is called. And Lion Speed, just slower on the rotations, I think, but great shot calling from Obsidian. It seems like they had a game plan just coming into this map. They knew exactly how they wanted to distribute the resources on the warhead phases and then ex and then just really quickly just like as soon as they were done with one objective they knew they were going to rotate to the other one and just being there that much sooner uh having an advantage against one of the defenders that much sooner uh guaranteed the more warheads and then they just snowballed that advantage into a level advantage and then from then on, they just couldn't fight. They took that really early keep, which was key. And on such a big map, like I said, uh, trying to deal with that split pressure gets harder and harder, even despite having two globals on their team. Um, so, well decided. We did see a couple of weird mistakes from Obsidian, of course. They didn't play completely perfectly. They uh, had that one missed nuke mid. Once again, I'm not sure if that was just BMing or not or show voting, but uh, I'm going to give my shout out to the people who didn't die as I usually do. Actually, Li Ming didn't die on the losing team, which is really unusual. Good job by her. Um, of course she did. I guess she it helped that she went full teleport build. And, uh, and then two people on the winning team didn't die. Tychus, who is not the most survivable of heroes, so good job there. And uh, Mirrodin, who is impossible to kill, so I don't know if I should give a shout out to him. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> of course Mirrodin can die, so great job uh, overextending just enough. We saw him get out a couple of times uh, at low health, so he knew the, the limits of this hero and uh, just got out at the right time, so great job there. I'm going to show the talents in case anyone is wondering or want to do their own analysis, but it was pretty standard all around except for the playmaker and we did see a couple of two playmakers isolate targets and I think because this map is so spread out and there are these little skirmishes, it is, it might be the, the better choice here. I mean, of course Avatar is great for all those big team fights where you have to sustain, you have to get all the HP you can to try and frontline for your for your squishies, but in smaller skirmishes, in 3 on 3s, 4 on 4s, you know, 2 on 2 fights, Playmaker to throw someone out of position can be very powerful, especially if you know you have the numbers advantage at some point. You identify that, you jump in, you Playmaker, and then uh, you just isolate a target. So. Huh, really well thought out there. I have to experiment with that with that heroic choice on this map for sure. So anyway, well played for both teams. Once again, I'm dualistic. Uh, you just watched Chair League Season Three Division Two match between Obsidian Gaming and Lion Speed. Congrats to Obsidian Gaming once again. I look forward to following this team once again next week, and I will be ha I will have a cast tomorrow as well. Uh, so tune in for that. Give me a follow if you enjoyed the cast. The VODs will be up on YouTube, the info of which you can find on the bottom of the page there. So have a great night everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you to both games. <laughs> Thank you to both teams for playing and have a great night.